Hi there folks, thanks for joining us. I've just got some uh, tankards here, They've, they're drying off uh, and uh, I want to put some red iron oxide slip on them so join me over here on the table and um, we'll just talk about that. I, I like I like red iron oxide slip I do. So as you can see I've got a, a bucket there. Okay let's just talk about this. So what is red iron oxide slip? Well it's basically, red iron oxide slip is basically a, a red clay um, with some additional iron oxide added to it. Okay so um, and the recipe for this is, if you're interested in knowing how to make it up, uh, is 75% red clay, just regular red clay that you'd throw pots with, like a terracotta red clay, and 25% red iron oxide. Okay, so 75, 25. And um, let's just bring the camera into the bucket. <laughs> And yes, you, uh, you mix it up dry weight, of course, and then um, put it through a sieve with water. I use one of these whisks, caterer's whisk, is a useful thing to have. So, consistency of this, it's like... Uh, like cream, like runny cream. Okay, I gotta wash my hand now. <laughs> so, good idea when you're doing this. Have a have a sponge and some water handy. Okay. Right, so let's just, as you can see over there, I've got some tankards. I've done, I've already done a couple there. Um, what, what does this give us? What does, what effect does this give us? Right, well, probably in a lot of cases when you're going to use red iron oxide, you might either wax beforehand, in other words, take this tankard here for example, you would, you would do a, a decoration here in wax on the, on the tankard. You'd let it dry and then you would take it and dip it into the, into the red iron oxide slip. Usually only on the outside but not on the inside. Okay, That's one thing you can do. Another thing that you can do is you can dip it in the iron oxide slip first and then when it's sort of semi-dry, not obviously not when it's wet, but when it's dry to touch, you can then either take a, a tool of some description to scratch through the slip to the clay underneath, all right? And that's exactly what we're gonna do, in fact, in, in this case with these. So, um, just position this camera so, it's, so you can see, but it's not in my way. Okay, about like that. So now the these want to be they don't want to be freshly made. You know, it's best to let them like set up a bit. If you're going to dip them in slip, I think let them harden off a touch. You can see beginning to show a little whiteness coming through the the clay beginning to dry on the surface. That's a good time, I think, to, to do that. These are, if anything, just a little bit a little bit premature, a little softer. I mean they're they're okay to do. Um, so give this a good stir.
So I'm holding it like that, you see. Finger on the, the lip there, there's a soft bit of my finger, and a finger here on the bottom. Okay, not on the edge like that. I can't grip it properly like that. I need to have a, thing, a thumb there and a finger there. Okay, so I'm going to dip the, 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 the slip down to about where my finger is, all right, and then I'm going to come up. These are not double dipped, of course. So down to the level that, that I want, and then up. Give it, a, give it a shake off a bit like that. Okay, then I transfer to my finger on the bottom, putting it down on the, on the wear board, like that. Okay. Steady hand, take it down, keep it dead level, and up. Shake off. I don't want to get any of this of the slip on the on the on the base of the pot. Because it means I have then got to take a sponge and I've got to wipe it off and it can begin to look messy. So, you know, I'm trying to be working as cleanly as possible here. If I do make a mistake, then that's, that's life. Well, then you just use the sponge. And so on and so forth. Okay, well, I'll do the rest of those in a moment. I'm just going to quickly wash my hand. So, yes, yeah, just going back to what I was saying about what, why do we do this? Do we just leave it like that? Um, no, we do not. <laughs> what happens after the, it's, uh, it's been scraffitoed or waxed, the pot is then left to dry out thoroughly and it's bisque fired and then it comes out of the bisque kiln and um, what we then do is dip it then in a, in a white kind of glaze. And I'll show you, here is a, an example, this is actually I think is a rather good a rather good example on this small bud vase of this kind of um, effect. So you've got the red iron oxide slip underneath. You've got the you've got the scraffito decoration uh, showing through. And in fact, I've used a combination of the lemon zester and uh, my hacksaw blade there to do this. To do this decoration, um, it can it can vary a lot. Actually, you can get a lot of variance with with this decoration. Sometimes it can come out more grey, sometimes more irony, with the iron the iron breaking through the glaze in a sort of spotty uh, fashion. Okay, so that's 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 what we're we're aiming at. It'll be down to the kiln if the kiln is kind to us, though, won't it? That's always the case. Nothing is cut and dried, is it, in this game? <laughs> Nothing is cut and dried until... And that's, that's, that's the mystery of, it, of pottery, isn't it? That we, put, we do our best efforts, but then we have to put them in the kiln, and when they're in the kiln, we can't touch them. Hands off. You have to let the kiln do its work. And that's, you never really know when you open the kiln exactly what result you're going to get. Not with the kind of firing that we're doing anyway. And because we're working hand, working with our hands, and you know, there's always a little bit of, of variance in what we do. Maybe we, we apply the glaze maybe a little bit thicker one time than another. 
you know, because we're not, we're using, everything is sort of judged and, and measured a little bit by eye, you know, I, I just, I look at the glaze here and I feel it and I look at it and I think, yeah, that's about right. But maybe, you know, on one occasion, it may not be quite, on another occasion, a pot might be in a certain place in the kiln and the temperature was just right for that combination of thickness of glaze and it just gives you a certain result. So we have to be philosophical a little bit with the results that we get. We have something that we're aiming at, but at the same time, we have to give space to the kiln and to the, the clay, the glazes, the materials, the atmosphere in the kiln, etc. All these things to come together to give a result. And um, you have to be a bit philosophical about, about the result at the end of it when it comes through the kiln. You know, it's very easy to have this sort of very fixed idea in your mind about how, how it's got to be. And if it isn't just like that, then you're going to be really, really depressed. Well, that's, you don't want to be like that. Uh, have a little bit more of an open mind for results that are um, maybe not quite exactly as you like. But funny, you know, I, I find sometimes that's the case, but then I like, I end up liking a pot, you know, at first I may not like it. And I have to put it to one side for a time, but I come back to it again and then I, I, I look at it and I, and I, it has a certain quality maybe, the pot, that I didn't initially see because maybe it was too quiet. It was a quiet pot, you see. So there's quiet pots and there's loud pots. And um, very often I find the loud pots, in other words, the pots that are all singing and dancing and all fancy colours and all lustrous and all everything and everything's popping, you know. Sometimes those pots, I go off them. And it's sometimes it's some of the quieter pots that begin to, uh, I begin to actually appreciate more. Anyway, there's a few, th <laughs> few thoughts for you. Um, you know, uh, allow, allow some of the more subtle pots to grow on, to grow on you. And don't be a person that just, so, you know, because some, some of the loud pots, are kind of shallow, if you know what I mean. And uh, try to, cult I think it's good to try to cultivate a slightly deeper taste and f for more subtle, subtle, subtle forms and shapes and glaze effects. Here ended the lesson. <laughs> hey, good, uh, thanks for joining us, folks. And uh, yeah, just a little quick clip here on, on, um, these mugs, these tankards, and um, we'll follow them through the, the kiln and we'll show you the results. Okay, that's it. Go to my website, simonleafpottery.com, and uh, don't forget, keep practicing. <laughs> I'll see you soon. Bye bye. Dee, dee, dee.